All Blacks, Argentina, Tri-Nations. Doing this video with uh, contacts on. I've got other stuff to do. Squeezing this video in between stuff. Uh, so if it looks weird to see me in context, it, uh, it feels weird to be doing a video in context. But there you go. I can still see teams, recent history, odds. That's what we'll talk about. And you guys can let me know your thoughts as always the recent history the long-term history between the all blacks and the pumas has been pretty one-sided uh the last five the all blacks have won all five they've never lost to the pumas there's been a draw but generally uh it's been pretty happy hunting for the all blacks against the guys from argentina and this one feels even a bit more stacked in favor of the all blacks given the lineup they've named but i'll put that in the description and go over it in a second uh, and the prep time that they've had, remember, with COVID, the uh, the Pumas guys haven't had a domestic competition like we've had with Super Rugby Aotearoa, and the All Blacks are four test matches in. The, the Pumas have had two warm-up games against a kind of Australian 15, but that's not the same. So you may find they are much more lacking in match sharpness, but I hope not. I'm hoping for a a relatively good bit of entertainment and not too lopsided but we will have to wait and see how things go of the most recent five games um, the last one was actually the pretty tight one 20 points to 16 over in argentina in 2019 uh, but from memory the all blacks didn't they not send their best team out to that one could be mistaken haven't checked the lineups from that one uh previous results 35 17 46 24 36 10 and 39 22 so the all blacks generally scoring 30 odd points with the pumas getting between you know in the teens and in the 20s so average score uh, 35 18 so like i just said 30s and in the teens or 20s so yeah it's been pretty comfortable for the all blacks and they should go into this one as massive favorites but in sports, stranger things have happened. Uh, in terms of the All Blacks lineup, they've made a whole, whole bunch of changes. Side that got beaten last week, and I've watched Ian Foster's press conference. He's pretty much said, we're going back to what worked at Eden Park and in Sydney. So, if it wasn't broke and then they shifted it, they're going back to what worked. So that's a bit unfortunate for i feel like you know like will jordan and akira you are now i'm not sure if will jordan's actually right after taking a knock but akira only went off because um there was the two and fussy red card so when he got like 20 odd minutes and he doesn't make the lineup for this one so it's a bit unfortunate for him maybe personally i would have liked to see a little bit more experimentation than this but with Ian Foster having a 50-50 win record at the moment, in terms of 50% wins and 50% not, even if one of those was a draw, he's got pressure on him to go out and win and make it pretty convincing. So he's reverted to the squad that's got it done. Um, there's no Tunga Fassi. He's got a three-match suspension. So Lomax starts at tight head. Moody's back after having a bit of a layoff. So he's at loose head. Coles is promoted back into the 23 and he starts so taylor drops to the bench hodgman's still there on the bench and la lala has finished his parental leave so he's over there on australia australian soil as well two pilotos recover recovered from his illness so he starts as well alongside whitelock um frizzell kane and savia are that back row so as i mentioned there's no spot for akira you won there aaron smith is back in the nine jersey richard moong is back in the 10 jersey so again reverting back to what we knew good hughes back at 12 alb is still 13 caleb clark on the left wing things kind of quietened down um in recent times about his potential but if he has a big game expect that to kick back off uh jordy barrett's back on the right wing and Bodie is at fullback so a few positional switches uh d max there on the bench rico iwane is back to the bench covering midfield and wing essentially uh weber is on the bench ahead of tj Pedanara. and uh ian foster essentially didn't say that he'd swung an axe for tj but maybe if you read between the lines you could see that maybe weber's get he said weber's getting rewarded so make of that what you will uh so tutu is back on the bench as well Vai is there so there's no scott barrett again he talked about it in the press conference ian foster about how um you know scott's had a couple of games off the bench and then a start and now it's time for him to have a break well gave away a stupid penalty last time so maybe having to sit for a week 
uh, will make him think twice before giving away a silly penalty like he did last time. But yeah, no Reese, no Lamape, no TJ, Tuinukuafe, Almua, Akira, Ofatunga Fasi, uh, Scott Barrett, as I mentioned. So big time changes for the All Blacks. But back to what I guess Ian Foster sees as his strongest side. For the Pumas, it's hard to see. Uh, the form of these guys, because again, we haven't got much to look at apart from those two kind of warm-up games. Titas Chaparro, Montoya, and uh, Gomez Cordella are the front row. So relatively experienced front row. Uh, I think Cordella is like 35. Montoya has been playing understudy for um, Crevy for quite some time, but has maybe surpassed him, I think, in at least the last maybe 18 months or so. So right there, the first choice guy in the hooker jersey. Petty is still world class at lock. I expect big things from him. Alemano is there. There's no Lavanini in the squad. So Alemano has traditionally been that third guy. So he steps up to be the second guy. Uh, Matera is still there as captain on the flank. Alongside him is a big bruising unit, Marcos Crema. And uh, Bruni gets the call at number eight. And number eight's been a jersey that's kind of rotated between quite a few guys in that Pumas lineup. So Bruni gets the nod. I think Isa has only just recovered from an injury, so that's kind of why we may be not seeing him. Uh, Kubeli and Sanchez are 9 and 10, so again, two pretty experienced hands. Uh, there's no signs of Miotti in the squad, but I haven't seen if he is injured or just not selected. Uh, Chocobares will get a debut from the 12 jersey, so he's up against two pretty experienced All Blacks, so he'll have a bit of pressure on him. But he's got an experienced man on Orlando outside him. He's another one of those underrated Argentinian players. Imhoff has been phenomenal. If you haven't been watching the European rugby over in France, he's been really, really excellent. So it's good to see him there on the left wing. Dalgui is a live wire on the right. And Carreras, who can play wing as well, is there at fullback. So very exciting back three for the Pumas. There's a couple more debutants on the bench in Sinti and uh, Grondona. The flanker, uh, you've got Bosch, Vivas, and Medrano as the forward replacements for the front row. Uh, Lazana is there as well. Bertrano is the backup number nine. And they've kind of rotated through a few number nines as well. But Kubeli is the guy for the minute. And uh, Santiago Cordero is there as the kind of outside back replacement. And it's good to see the likes of him and Imov in the Pumas because with... Um, with the way things have been run there with Ledesma for a while, some of the guys in, in Europe have kind of been on the outer, but it seems like they're they're calling on all the resources they've got. So it's good to see some really big names of the Argentinian game in the Pumas side. So hopefully these guys can can put in a good shift. But the odds are definitely stacked against them. Make no make no bones about that. Um, the bookies over here in New Zealand have got New Zealand by twenty four points so pretty big favorites and rugby forecast algorithm likewise has new zealand by 24 points so pretty pretty big time favorites um if the all blacks were to suffer a loss damn the pressure would be on old ian but honestly he's got his strongest team out there against the team which hasn't played a test match since the world cup as guys have had a lot more actual game time. So it's one they should be winning and winning pretty comfortably. But I do hope the um, I do hope the Pumas guys are not as underdone as maybe they might be. Because hopefully those two pre-match games have at least got a bit of match fitness into them. We'll see how many times in the pre-match stuff the, uh, the pundits talk about the Pumas guys being full of passion. Because that's pretty much the, the default line they go for in terms of the, the Pumas. But we will see. Um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the lineups. What do you think about Ian Foster reverting to pretty much his his winning 23? What do you think about the Pumas lineup? It's sometimes a bit hard to get news about what's going on in the Pumas camp. Because obviously more of that will be in the Spanish press but uh, if you guys do have any updates on some of the players who are not selected uh, do let us know because that's always interesting to see but yeah um first game for the pumas in quite some time happy to see them go and um yeah should be a cracking one hopefully not too much of a blowout but anyway you guys let me know your thoughts and i'll talk to you again soon see you later